Okay, so uh, this is this class is about stochastic system, and stochastic system is to study a system whose outcome is stochastic and can vary with time. And before we really understand uh, how stochastic system can evolve over time, we need to use some probability tools, and that is why we want to study and uh, go over the preliminaries. Uh, in this chapter. And now, let's de uh, define three uh, very important uh, elements in uh, probability theory. The first one is called random experiment. So basically, a random experiment is, is, is an experiment where outcome cannot be determined in advance. So meaning something that you don't know ahead of time. This is about a random experiment. And a sample space. So think about this. If we have a, if we want to flip a coin, okay. So be, because before we really flip a coin, we don't know the outcome of the the experiment. So this is actually a random experiment. But the outcome of this experiment, the, uh, the outcome of this experiment can be head or tail to outcome. And this is called sample space. That means the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. And the event E, that means a subset of a sample space. So think about that. If I flip two coins, and then the result can be either head, head, or head, tail, or tail, head, or tail, tail. So if we want to discuss the event that uh, we will have had in the uh, first flip coin, uh, in the first coin flipping, then we are talking about this two, right? The first two. Uh, so that's a subset of uh, 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 so this the whole set is the sample space if we flip two coins. And the first two are uh, close to a subset of this sample space, so this is called an event. And now we have an axiom here. We suppose that for each event E of the sample space, a number of probability E is defined and satisfies the following, the following axioms. The first axiom is that the probability is between 0 and 1. We, everybody has known that, right? And the first, and the second, SM is that the probability of the sample space, meaning the all possible outcomes, has to be 1. Okay, this is a uh, trivial 2. And the third SM is that the E1, E2, if they are mutually exclusive, meaning EI intersect EJ is equal to an empty set, then the probability of this union of the events is actually equal to the summation of the probability of the e event i. So, meaning if we have two events, for example, E1 and E2 here, and they are uh, mutually exclusive, so meaning they are, there is no intersection part, right? And then if you want to uh, calculate the probability of E1 union E2, and then you can simply use probability E1 plus probability E2. Definition. So, EN, if this is a sequence of events, then we want to define three kinds of events. The first kind is called increasing events. So, if EN is said to be increasing, if EN belongs to EN plus 1, so it, it will be like this, EN and this is EN plus 1. So EN belongs to EN plus 1. So you can think about, think of this event like it is uh, an increasing event because the event is actually, the set is actually getting bigger and bigger. And the other, on, on the opposite, we are talking about decreasing event. So if EN is said to be decreasing, it will be like this. So if this is EN, and this is EN plus 1. Okay, so this event is actually decreasing. 
Okay, so it becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, so we have increasing event and decreasing event. Now we want to define limiting event. What limiting event is all about? So if EI is increasing event, the union of EI, so basically it is getting bigger and bigger, right? And then we define the limiting event like the, the union from I to infinity of EI. This is the uh, limiting event. This is the definition, okay? And also, if E n is decreasing, then the intersection. So you are getting, so E n E i is getting smaller and smaller, right? So in the end, the, the 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 intersection of all the events, all the decreasing events, is defined as the limiting event, okay? So basically, the limiting event really depends on whether this is an increasing. Uh, event or decreasing event. But we want to keep it in mind that this is the definition. Okay, so in the uh, in the sequel if we talk about the limiting event, we always mean if this is the increasing event, we always mean this is the union of the EI. If this is a decreasing event, we always mean this is the intersection of EI. Now we have prob uh, property one. So if E n is either increasing or decreasing, then we have this property. Limit probability P uh, E n is equal to probability of limit E n. Okay, let's look at this uh, equality here. So basically, the the left hand side, the probability of E n. This is a number because this re refers to the probability, right? So this is a number. So because this is number and that, that depends on e, the probability of E n can change over n, right? So we can take limit, let n goes to infinity. So you can think of probability E n like a sequence of numbers. And you are really drive the sequence of, of numbers that n goes to infinity. And uh, the, the right hand side, we let's look at the uh, what's inside the bracket. So limit n goes to infinity e n. This is a, a limiting event. So and if if you take probability for this limiting event, this is a number two. And this property tells us that the left hand side, this number is actually equal to the right hand side, the number two. And now we want to prove that. Okay. So suppose without loss of generality, we assume that E n is increasing. So we let first we let E one is equal to uh, F one is equal to E one, and F two is equal to E two intersect E one complement. What does that mean? That means if this is your E one, and supposedly this is your E two, right? A bigger set, right? Now I want to decompose E1 and E2. So I like E1 equal to F1, F1, and E2, and uh, this part is equal to F2. So you you know that if I define this way, E1 or we call it F1, and E and F2 are actually mutually exclusive, right? And we can define F3 like this part, right? This is F3. So in this case, we know that E1, E2, E3 is an increasing event that's getting bigger and bigger. But F1, F2, F3 are actually mutually exclusive. There is no intersection between them, okay? So when we define the, the, the sets, we introduce a new notation called F, and then we, we make sure that F1, F2, Fn are mutually exclusive. So now we know that if we put them together, I mean, if we union Fn, actually Fn consists of those points En that are not in any of the, the EI. So, so that, that's the, the reason that Fi are mutually exclusive to each other. However, we want to understand that Fn is mutually exclusive and two, that the union of Fi and the union of Ei is actually is equal to the union of Ei because we are doing nothing but just 
you know, separating the 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 EI, you know, the the we 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 want to separate the the extra part of of E2 to E1, right? So so their union should be equal to each other. Okay, so now let, let's prove that the property is true. So we start from the, the right hand side. So the right hand side is probability limit n e n n goes to infinity. Okay, and based on the definition, we know that this is the limiting event, and e n is actually an increasing event. So we know that this limits e n. We can write it like the union e i. This is because of the definition, right? And also we know that because union fi and union ei are the is are the same, so union ei probability of union ei is equal to probability union of fi. And also because fi are mutually exclusive to each other, so if we want to calculate its probability, is equal to the summation of probability fi, because fi are mutually exclusive to each other. Right? Okay. And now, if we let, we, we use n to replace the infinity here, and we can let n go to infinity. And then, because f and n are mutually exclusive, so we know that the limit probability of union fi, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, because F and N are mutually exclusive. Okay, so let me emphasize this again because F and N is mutually exclusive, so this is equal to this. Okay, now we know that because union FI and the union EI are actually equal to each other by right here, right? So so we have this equality here. And then union of EI is actually equal to EN because EN is increasing. So we have proved that probability of limit n goes to infinity EN is actually equal to limit n goes to infinity probability of EN. And we finish the proof. And if you want to prove that EN is decreasing, actually you can just think of this like uh, EN, because we have proved that EN is increasing and the probability 1 is true. And if we want to prove that EN is decreasing, you can look at this like uh, EN complement is increasing. So you can actually run the whole proof you know, the logic, the same logic again, and you just replace E F by E N complement, and the, the whole process will be the same. So I'm going to skip the, the, the proof here. Now I give you an example about the application of this property. So if we have a sequence of random variables, okay, so we have x0, x1, up to xn, and if we let x0 represent the size of zero's generation and x1 represent the all of spring of the first generation and xn represents the size of the n generation. So, and we want to know that what is the probability that eventually the population will extinct, will become extinct, meaning that we will have zero of spring. So, and we assume that probability of Xn equals to zero, meaning in the nth generation, Xn is equal to zero, the, the size of our spring is equal to zero, and the probability of this event is equal to one minus one over n. Now, we want to use the property we we just learn, okay? So we let e n equals to x n equals to zero, and uh, because x n if x n equals to zero, x n plus one is equal to zero. Why is that? Because if you have zero parents in the n generation, the next generation the offspring will be zero too. The size of the offspring will be zero too. Right? So if this is the case, then we know that EN, which 
which refers to uh, xn is equal to zero belongs actually belongs to en plus one. So that shows us that en is increasing. So by property one, we know that probability n goes to infinity. Probability en is equal to we can move the limit inside the bracket. So it's equal to probability limit n goes to infinity en. So eventually, extinction of the population meaning meaning we have a union xn equals to zero n from one to infinity. The union why the union? The union means one of the the set holes and the the the, the union holes, right? So meaning eventually, if there is one n that makes xn equals zero, then the population actually becomes extinct. So probability of union xn equals to zero, this is equal to limit en. And limit en because we know that this is increasing event, we can move the limit outside of the probability by property one. So that is limit one over one over n. So when n goes to infinity, this limit becomes one. So that means eventually the population will become extinct. Now we want to discuss the Borel Cantelli Lemma 1. So if E1, E2 denote a sequence of events, and if we let summation probability EI less than infinity, then we know that probability of an even uh, an infinite number of the ER occur is equal to zero. And first, before we really get started, we want to know and what does that mean by an infinite number of the EI occurs? Actually that means the union I from one uh, from n to infinity EI and intersection n from one to infinity why is that? Let me prove that this equality is actually true. Okay, so if an infinite number of the EI occurs, so that means we have infinite number of EIs, okay? Then that means the union EI, I from n to infinity, must occur for each n, so that you will have infinite number of EI occurs. And thus, this can occur. And on the other hand, if we want to show that this occurs, then we know that, then we know that the union i from n to infinity yet occurs for each n. And that means for each n, at least one of the e occurs for n i is greater than or equal to n. So we have infinite number of the EI occurs. So in summary, what I'm going to say is that if you have infinite number of EI occurs, that means the union of EI and the intersection of uh, this set. Okay, so now we look at this set, the union of EI. And it's actually a decreasing sequence of events. Why is that? Because you think about that. If i is equal to n, and i is equal to n plus 1, i is equal to n plus 2, obviously when n becomes n plus 1, n plus 2, the union of EI is actually decreasing, right? So this is actually a decreasing event. So the union of EI, the intersection of this probability, is actually equal to, we can take limits because of the property 1, right? And then we uh, uh, we can take limit, I'm sorry, we can take limit because we know this is the definition. This is uh, because the union yeah, is a decreasing sequence. And because the property 1, we can move the limits outside of the probability. Okay? So, so if we did, so we, we move that outside probability, that, be, that goes to uh, this equation. And also because EI, the union of EI, the probability of the union of EI is less than or equal to uh, summation probability of EI, right? And then if we know that summation or probability of EI is less than infinity, then this will become zero, okay? 
Now we'll give you an example. So if x1, x2 is such that xn is equal to 0, uh, is equal to 1 over n squared, and this is equal to 1 minus probability of xn is equal to 1. And then we can let en is equal to xn is equal to 0. And then you know that because xn is equal to 0, that is 1 over n squared. So summation 1 over n squared is actually less than infinity, like this. So based on for real complete lemma, we know that Sn equals 0 for infinite number of n. Or for infinite number of n, that means infinitely often. Sn is equal to 0 must be 0 because of the for real complete lemma. So what does that mean? That means when n is sufficiently large, Sn must be, must be 1. Okay, so that means n goes to infinity, xn is equal to 1 with probability. probability.